itself bigger on this. Cool. So the formula we're going to talk about today is going to be m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, we're good there. All right, now, where am I getting the x and the y from? Can anybody tell me where that comes from? What is that referring to? Reed, what is that referring to? The axes. Yeah, the ordered pairs or the axes, right? So we are all aware that at this point, all of our ordered pairs are written as x comma y. We're okay with that? So this time I'm giving you ordered pairs and these ordered pairs that you're seeing are the ordered pairs that are actually going to be on a line. These ordered pairs are what you actually see on a line. So if I wanted to describe this, this right here is going to be my x1. And that's my x1. What do you think this one's going to be? Your y1? Yeah, good. My y1. And what do you think this is going to be? X2. X2. What do you think this is going to be? Y2. Good. Are we all okay with that? So now if I want to set up this equation, I'm going to take my y2, which is 3, minus my y1, which is 1, my x2, which is 4, minus my x1, which is 1. Are we okay there? All right, let me ask you this. Rosie, what's 3 minus 1? 2. two. And Donna, what's 4 minus 1? 3. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your slope. What? That is crazy. That is crazy. Are we going to have to simplify? Sometimes, yeah. Can you simplify 2 over 3? No, but like, like, if we get like different answers, are we going to have to simplify? Yeah, 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 we will. And we're, all, we're evolving this into... Um, some different pieces. So again, we're still talking about slope for the foreseeable future. It's like we're going to keep adding components to it. But as of right now, I just want you to memorize this formula and get figure out how to work that. Let's do another one. This one's got an extra step, so let me show you. Uh, negative 2. Let me see if I can. Oh, I'm going to try to get my laptop a little bit closer so they can see. Try that. That'll be a little bit easier. Okay, so this negative two is going to be my what? X one or X two? X one. X one. And then therefore my four is going to be my what? My X, my Y one or my Y two? Y one. How about the ten? Uh, X one. I mean X two. X two. And how about the negative two? Y two. All right, and so if I write this out, would somebody be willing to try to put this into the formula for me? Reed, go for it. Uh, y2 over 10 minus... Nope, this is my x. Look, x, y. Oh, no. Uh, y, so negative 2 minus 4, and then 10 minus negative 2. 10 minus a negative 2. Now, let me talk about that real quick. You guys heard him say that correctly. There's a minus sign in the problem, which is this one, and there's a negative sign on the number. So I now have minus and negative. We can't just eliminate one of them. Let me say that again. There's a minus sign in the problem, and there's a negative sign in the problem, or in the number. Okay, so when I have minus and negative, what does that actually want me to do, Anthony? Good, I gotta put them together and add them. Do you understand how I got to that plus sign? Mm -hmm. All right, negative 2 minus 4 is what? Negative 2 minus 4 is what, Anthony? Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 2? No. Nope. Oh, no, it's negative 6. Negative 6. Remember, guys, this is 8th grade, so if you're unsure about your math, you have a calculator to use. And 10 plus 2 is what? 12. Can I simplify negative 6 over 12? Yeah. What does that become? One half. Negative. That's my slope, though. 
Easy enough? Mm -hmm. All right, here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to try number three on your own. I'm going to go over it with you. I just want you to try it. I'm going to grab a drink real quick while you try number three. Okay, Mike, you want to tell me how you set it up? Let me rephrase that. Will someone tell me how they set it up? Kendall, would you be so kind, please? I'm sorry, we just, I can't hear you. Rosie, can you help them out? Negative five minus five. Negative five what? Five. Beautiful, is everybody okay with how she got negative five minus five? Uh -huh. Y2 minus Y1, okay, over, can anybody do the X2 minus X1? Josh, go for it. No, because remember, we're doing two. This is my second pair over here, minus my first pair. All right, Jackson, help them out. Negative eight, over three. negative eight minus a negative four. And what happens when I have minus a negative? It becomes a positive, right? Mm -hmm. So now negative five minus five becomes a negative 10. Negative 8 plus 4 becomes a negative 4. And if I simplify, I have a negative divided by a negative. What does that make my answer become? Positive. Yeah, good. Negative divided by a negative becomes a positive. And 10 over 4 becomes what? 5, Five over 2. Are we good with that? Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, Ruger, help me set up number 4. Come set it up. Uh, nope, because remember we're going to start with our y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Zero. Zero? Nope, nope. All right, guys, this is number one, this is number two. Do we see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so every time that we're starting with a y2 or an x2, it's got to start with this section over here. These are my ones, so every time we start with an x1 or a y1, it starts with this one. Does that make sense? Okay, so let me ask you this. What is my y2 value, Isaac? Your y2 value. Let me ask you this. Raise your hand if you can tell me what the y2 value is. Okay. Nathan, what's my y2 value? Four. Thank you. What's my y1 value, Mariah? Zero. Great. Thank you so much. 
Isaac, what's my y2, x2, or I'm sorry, my x2 value? Beautiful, thank you, sir. Ruger, what's my x1 value? Beautiful. 4 minus 0 is 4 over negative 12. What does 4 over negative 12 simplify down to? Two over six. Okay, I can live with that. So now I've got negative two over six. Can I simplify negative two over six? So then we end up with a negative one over three. Are we good there? How do I feel about this? Pretty good? Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to scroll up. And I want you to do five and six. And I want you to compare it with your neighbors. You're going to do five and six. And you're going to compare it with your neighbor. And six. Okay, can we please stop doing that right now? Thank you. All right, do we have an answer for number five yet? Yeah. What we get, Reed? Zero over negative two, do we agree? Yeah. All right, we'll come back to that one in just a second. Do we have an answer for number six yet? Yeah. We do? Yeah. What'd you get, Isaac? I got, I got negative three over zero. Do we agree? Yes, sir. All right, everybody pull up your calculator on your Chromebook real quick. Okay, now, before we go to the calculator, I want to show you something. What did we say slope was in the simplest form yesterday? I said it was something over something. X over Y, is, or, or Y over X, yes. But I gave you two words, though, is that it? Rise over, Rise over run. Do we all remember that? Yeah. All right, so let me show you something. So what that means is for this first problem, I'm rising up zero and going over two. So here I am as a line, going up zero, back two. Up zero, back two. Up zero, back two. What type of line is that going to create? Think about the slope dude video you just watched. What type of line is that? Zero. This is a zero slope. It's a zero slope. In your calculator, do zero divided by negative two. Zero divided by negative two. What does it give you? Zero. Zero. Do you understand how this one's zero? go to the next one. This one, I'm going to go down three, one, two, three, over zero. Down three, one, two, three, over zero. Down three, one, two, three, over zero. What type of line have we just created? Undefined. Undefined. Good. Now, yes, I know I said a bad word. I cussed. Here's what I want you to do. Do negative three divided by zero in your calculator. And your calculator. It says what? Because it's a cuss word, it can't say it. The calculator is too wholesome, it won't ever say those bad words. So, do you see how you can identify which ones are undefined versus which ones are zeros? Yeah. 